Are you ready to hear an update on Metroid Prime 4? I mean, it's it's a good update, but it's also an interesting update uh, because based on what's happening, it's almost another double-edged sword. If you guys remember, I did a video some time ago about a dev update that's like a double-edged sword. It's a gr- it's really good, but also kind of worrisome. Here we are with another double-edged sword update on Metroid Prime 4. Before I get into that, I got to remind you, we got a couple big giveaways going on right now. One giveaway is for a Switch Lite with two second place winners winning a game of choice. Uh, To enter that giveaway, go down into the description. You subscribe to the channel, uh, follow on Twitter, all this chat, a whole bunch of stuff. Like, comment, a bunch of stuff. There'll be be a laundry list of things you can do, including joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for as little as $1 a month. You do that, you get 15 entries into this giveaway in every giveaway we do, including a second giveaway we have going on through a gleam.io link down in the description. We are giving away three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. To enter that, hit that gleam.io link, join our Patreon, all that jazz. And I wish everyone luck. That's six winners. Uh, All the winners will be announced on October 1st. All right. Let's get into this. As you see here, I'm on NintendoLife.com. Um, I want to be on NintendoPrime.com. I just don't have this, this story up yet. For those who don't know, I do have a website, NintendoPrime.com, where I post Nintendo news. Uh, I just don't have this story up there yet. So here we are at Nintendo Life. Uh, and it says, Retro Studios has hired an industry veteran to help steer Metroid Prime 4 development. Now, anytime Retro Studios hires people uh, for Metroid Prime 4 and hires good people, people with lots of big games on their resume, that's typically a good sign. You want high-quality developers working on Metroid Prime 4. But who this person is and what their job is uh, is a little bit worrisome. To hire someone for this position, I guess, at this point, doesn't bode well for where the game is at. Uh, And maybe that's par for the course for Retro Studios, and we'll get into that here. So it says here, Retro Studios has hired veteran Dylan Job to aid the development of Metroid Prime 4. This is from Video Game Chronicles. It's the original source. It says, Job's resume is pretty impressive. During a 25-year career, he's worked on titles like Doom, Twisted Metal, Black, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. He also served as a director on Sony's extremely ambitious PlayStation 3 title, Warhawk. It was a very ambitious title. Job joined Retro earlier this year, and his role on Metro Prime 4 is listed as Director of Development which means he's ultimately responsible for the title's schedule, scope, and product quality, as well as performance evaluations of team members and liaising between departments to meet goals. Job's arrival comes after Retro has also hired a host of other new talent, including, um, I can't I can't say his name, so I'll just say Bat, uh, who worked on Call of Duty, uh, Adad Morales, who worked on Battlefield Hardline, Brian Irk, who worked on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Nicholas Wilson on Borderlands 3, Mark Capers on New Super Lucky's Tale, James Beach on Crisis 3 and the DC Universe Online, Stefan Dupree on Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which is interesting because he already worked at Retro. I guess they rehired him back. Uh, and then Kyle Heffley, who worked on Halo. These are all big names. But to focus on Job. So the thing is, his role is Director of Development. He's responsible for the title, schedule, scope, product quality, and performance evaluations. Why would you need to hire someone to do that job if this game is really far in development? This is a beginning of development kind of job. So this is really good because he's good at what he does. He's good at running running projects. Warhawk was actually a pretty decent game. He's really good at what he does. The issue isn't the quality of the hire. The issue is, why do they need to hire someone for this position now? That's where I'm a little worried, because they've supposedly been working on this game since 2018. We're in 2020. This is the kind of person you hire back in 2018, early 2019. We're in you know midway through 2020, over midway through. Why are we hiring someone for this important of a, of a position that handles the schedule, handles the scope, and the product quality? That is insane to hire someone at this point unless the game is having problems. And this is where we need to start being concerned about Metroid Prime 4. Now, you might say, oh, that's nonsense. We don't need to be worried about it. Give them a break. The game's not coming until 2022 anyways. Who cares? Fine, that's fair. But Retro Studios hasn't made anything since Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze on Wii U. We have not seen a single product come out from this company in, what, five, six years? 
seven years? It's been a long time since this company has done anything. This is Nintendo's premier Western video game studio, and we have seen nothing from them. We've heard rumors. We've heard that they were working on, say, a Star Fox racing game. Never actually saw that game. Don't know if it exists. Maybe it was canned, or maybe it was set aside when they took over Metroid Prime 4. We heard that before the Star Fox racing game, they were working on a different game that ended up getting canceled because the progress on it did not go the way Nintendo was okay with. So for all we know, Nintendo has been dumping millions of dollars into development at Retro Studios, and they have nothing to show for it. Now, according to rumors and reports, Retro Studios is running this project now because they've made a pitch to Nintendo that looked more impressive than what was happening at Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco supposedly took Metroid Prime 4, split it up between three different studios or four different studios that were doing different parts of the game, and they were trying to bring it all together. And Nintendo didn't like, not only did they not like that development process, they didn't like what they were seeing from the end product, which is why the pitch from Retro ended up being something Nintendo was willing to take seriously. And Retro Studios is the originating creator of Metroid Primes 1 through 3. So them working on Metroid Prime 4 actually makes sense now why they weren't originally hired for it is probably because they were working on a different game it's not as if retro studios was doing nothing until they got metroid prime 4 they were clearly working on other projects that have never seen and may never see the light of day and already spell trouble for one of nintendo's premier and really only western owned studios metro Re retro studios has a reputation for making amazing games but they haven't been able to make one in a long time and here we are supposedly at least a year and a half minimum if not two years into full development of metroid prime 4 and just now they are hiring a director of development they're also recently this year hired all those other big names we previously mentioned why are all these hirees happening now shouldn't metroid prime 4 be so deep into development at least halfway through that the primary people you would have in position to make key decisions on the direction of the game, shouldn't they already be in place? Shouldn't they have been in place at the very beginning of game development? And to hire someone like this, as awesome as he is, and as much as I think Job is going to bring a lot of experience, a lot of know-how, and an amazing direction to this game, I truly believe that, uh, that Dylan Job is going to do an amazing job and going to ultimately produce a really, really good Metroid Prime game in, like, 2024. It, it, next gen, well after Switch. It, it's not going to be an OG Switch game. Not at this point. That's why I say it's kind of a double-edged sword, because he's going to make an amazing product, but it's almost like they're restarting the development again. That's the crazy thing. Hiring this kind of person is almost like resetting development all over again and this seems to be a running theme based on every report which is backed by the fact we've seen nothing not even a trailer from retro studios since the release of donkey kong tropical freeze on wii u it's supported by the fact retro studios has given us nothing so whether or not you want to believe rumors and reports fact is we've seen nothing from retro studios and by the time we see this game it might be a decade in between seeing something from retro studios retro studios is has major issues I don't know why Nintendo can't seem to get them solved. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because there's this Western um, culture of making games doesn't clash with Nintendo's culture, where Nintendo likes to have employees that stay, not these temporary contract employees, but all the Western developers are used to working on smaller contracts, hence why they hired back someone who worked on Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. If this would have been at Nintendo, like someone who worked on a Zelda game, they would still be there because they're not just contract employees. They are full-time employees, salaried employees, whatever, that stay with the company until they don't want to be there anymore. That's not the case with Retro. They have guys rotating in and out all of the time. Most of the team that made Metro Prime 1 through 3 is no longer at Retro Studios. So it's good to hire all these big name people with all this experience. That's, that, that, that's nothing but amazing news. But the sad part is that they need to hire these kind of people when they're supposed to be two years in the development and ready to potentially give us a reveal trailer. So... If you are looking forward to a new Metro game, a new Metroid Prime game in specific, it doesn't mean we won't get some 2D Metroid game or something else. If you're looking forward to Metroid Prime 4, it sounds like we're still going to have to wait a long time. So I'm excited for the hire. I really am. Looking at his resume, some impressive stuff. Just like the last guy they hired that gave us a double-edged sword. 
So the double-edged sword here is great hire, but you shouldn't need this person right now. The fact that you do means the game's in trouble. So take that for what you will. I really hope that I'm wrong and we get much of Prime 4 next year and all is well. Uh, maybe this is just an, an additional hire because they wanted a, a second, third, fourth set of eyes in a similar position to look at things. But uh, I don't think you hire. This isn't the kind of guy you hire as like a fourth, as a second, third, fourth option. This is someone you hire as a primary option. So that's just me. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. I hope for the best for Metro Prime 4. I believe that Retro Studios, when this game finally does come out, it'll be a fantastic game. I just don't know when. I don't know what's wrong and why Retro can't get their act together. So thank you guys for tuning in. I am Tender Overjust from Nintendo Prime. A little bit of a downer here on some news. But hey, you know, it is what it is. Let's move on to the next one.